everybody a very warm welcome to each and every one of you who have joined us on behalf of the of myself dr radhika srinivasan president of I, the secretary of the indian academy of cytologists dr brigadier vs jhavan president of iac and the entire executive committee of the indian academy of cytologists i extend each and every one of you a very warm welcome for having joined in the jewel 50 series uh, webinar series of the iac for today's for today evening we have dr henry domanski from sweden who is the speaker and he will be speaking on soft tissue cytopathology and i thank you dr henrik domanski for having accepted our invitation to be uh, the speaker for today and indeed he is a very eminent cytopathologist from sweden sweden and india are bound by very strong links as far as fnac is concerned and I can share with you this small story. 50 years ago, way back in the 1970s, Professor Subhash Kumari Gupta from PGIMER, my mentor, was deputed to the Karolinska Institute, Sweden, where she was trained in the art and science of fine needle aspiration cytology by the likes of Lohagen. She came back not only with fully trained and uh, with the books and also the handle and the needle. Friends, the, the handle, the FNA handle is actually originally from Cameco. We always write Cameco, AB Tabby, Sweden. And that came to India. And of course, it was kind of uh, copied uh, here locally in Chandigarh and uh, by a local company. And of course, now there are so many manufacturers of the FNA handle itself. Indeed, Sweden supported India in the initial years of FNAC, particularly by sending us the 20 ml syringes and the needles the Franzen's guide, the Franzen needle for performing pelvic masses, FNAC, and so on. So we have very strong ties and I immensely want, we, we are indebted to Sweden and I wish to put on record our thanks to Sweden from our country, the India wishes to thank Sweden as far as FNAC is concerned. And today FNAC is so widely practiced all over India and has saved millions of lives. With this brief uh, introduction, uh, I, I again, I wish to, uh, Hand over formally to Dr. Dev Prasoon, the president-elect of the Indian Academy of Cytologists, for formally introducing the speaker of today's session. Uh, and it's over to you, Dr. Dev Prasoon. Thank you. Dr. Dev, I think you need to unmute yourself. Sir, you're not unmuted. Okay. Good evening. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Henrik Domanski. Dr. Henrik Domanski received his medical degree in Poland from the Medical University in Wrocław. He completed his training in anatomical pathology and in cytopathology in Lund University Hospital, Sweden. Presently, Dr. Domanski is an associate professor in Lund University and a senior consultant in the Department of Clinical Genetics and Pathology in Lund. He is also a coordinator of the cytology service in university and regional laboratories, regions Skåne in Sweden. 
Dr. Damansky is a nationally and internationally recognized expert in the field of fine needle aspiration cytology in general and soft tissue and bone cytopathology in particular. His clinical research has been devoted to the investigation of early detection of neoplasm, particularly musculoskeletal neoplasm. Dr. Domansky is the first or second author or editor in five monographs and addresses, six book chapters, and has 100 papers published in international journals. Dr. Domansky serves as a vice president of the Swedish Society of Clinical Cytology. He was the president of the European Federation of Cytology Societies 2018-19 and the president of the 42nd European Congress of Cytology in 2019 in Malmö, Sweden. With this brief introduction of an accomplished cytopathologist, I request Dr. Domanski to deliver his lecture on soft tissue cytopathology, the Lund sarcoma group experience. Dr. Henrik Domanski. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, can you hear me? Yes. And uh, what about my presentation? Can you see it? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much for this introduction and your kind words. Good afternoon, everybody. First, um, I would like to say many thanks to the Indian Academy of Cytologists and to Professor Srinivasan for inviting me to this series of lectures and for giving me the opportunity to share our experience in cytological diagnosis of soft tissue tumors. Thank you. I'm glad to be here today and I'm available after my talk for discussion and to answer your questions. I don't have uh, any conflict of interest this close. To introduce my talk, I'm going to shortly discuss the current status and the specific problem encountered in cytopathology of soft tissue. After that, I will present our sarcoma team in uh, Lund and uh, our approach and the place of cytopathology in the evaluation of soft tissue lesions. I'm going to illustrate, illustrate my talk with some common or less common or challenging soft tissue cases. The objective of the diagnostic workup of soft tissue tumors is to provide the diagnosis which will enable optimal treatment planning. A tissue biopsy is a critical aspect in guiding appropriate initial management in patients with soft tissue tumors. The variety of sampling procedures, such as open surgical biopsy, core needle biopsy, and final aspiration biopsy are available to examine soft tissue lesions. Open surgical biopsy and histopathological examination have been regarded as the gold standard, but uh, during recent decades, open surgical biopsy has been replaced by core needle biopsy to establish histopathological diagnosis of soft tissue tumors. Regarding the soft tissue FNA, one can read in the fifth edition of classification of soft tissue and bone tumors by WHO. Frozen section diagnosis and FNA are not generally recommended. FNA is proposed by some expert centers 
with specific cytological expertise and the capability for careful clinical radiological correlation. According to this statement, considerable differences exist between various institutions and medical specialities regarding the value of cytology in the examination of primary soft tissue tumors. In some centers around the world, cytopathology is successfully used as the first line approach in the diagnosis of primary soft tissue tumors, with, uh, which has been documented in a number of reviews and uh, some textbooks and monographs. And uh, when we discuss cytopathology and soft tissue tumors, we must not forget countries with limited health care resources. In those countries, cytopathology is widely used in the examination of soft tissue tumors, as it is a less expensive and less infrastructure demanding diagnostic procedure. FNA is commonly used and generally accepted to confirm recurrences and meta metastasis of previously treated sarcomas and to diagnose metastasis of carcinoma, melanoma, or lymphoma presenting as a soft tissue mass. In such cases, FNA offers a low risk, fast and precise diagnostic modality in order to avoid invasive diagnostic procedures and unnecessary excisions. To illustrate this, this patient was admitted because soft tissue mass in the right upper arm. He had a history of renal carcinoma but clinically, a suspicious of sarcoma was raised. FNA smears show clusters of cells with small to middle size round nuclei and abundant cytoplasm with small vacuoli. There are some fragments of collagenous tissue in the cell clusters. And as you can see, the smears do not look like sarcoma. And on the cell block sections, we can appreciate preserved architecture of the clear cell neoplasm consistent with metastasis of clear cell renal carcinoma. And uh, we can confirm the diagnosis by immunostaining on cell block sections, showing uh, in this case CD10, PAX8, and RCC positivity. Coming to the diagnosis of primary soft tissue tumors, FNA has been used to a limited extent compared, for example, with FNA of the thyroid gland or salivary glands. As we all know, many types of soft tissue tumors show morphologic overlap, but they display particular patterns of highly specific protein expression or genetic changes and ancillary tests such as uh, immunocytochemistry or molecular tests can be used to confirm or rule out a specific diagnosis. Here you can see an example of small round cell tumors, poorly differentiated synovial sarcoma and Ewing sarcoma with the overlapping microscopic picture, but uh, very specific patterns of immunostainings and molecular alternations that help to make histologic diagnosis. As ancillary tests can be easily applied to cytological samples, the role of cytopathology alone or as a complementary procedure to core needle biopsy in the diagnosis of soft tissue tumors has uh, increased greatly in recent decades. And just to remind you, FNA is a rapid, safe, technically easy, and minimally invasive technique, most often performed in an outpatient setting. FNA has advantages over incisional and core needle biopsies, being a well-tolerated procedure and more easily applied to reach poorly accessible anatomical sites in situations where surgical biopsy is contraindicated. 
In addition, FNA allows for immediate adequacy evaluation. Regarding accuracy, there have been a large number of studies looking at the success and limitations of FNA in the setting of soft tissue and bone lesions. When used as the initial diagnostic test, FNA has been shown to be highly accurate with 89 to 100% sensitivity and 90 to 100% specificity in uh, distinguishing benign from malign malignant soft tissue tumors and to document recurrences or metastasis of previously treated sarcomas. According to previous publications, the overall accuracy of FNA in making the specific histological diagnosis and grading soft tissue sarcomas has been shown to be inferior to core needle and open biopsy. Regarding sarcoma grading in cytology, correct grading increases when segregated into high and low grades. The variable results of accuracy is related to the variable number of cases and heterogeneous cases available in the different studies, mixture of primary and metastatic tumors and soft tissue and bone lesions. Unfortunately, so far only a few studies exist focusing on cytopathology of primary soft tissue tumors and with case numbers exceeding 100. What about the limitations of FNA? The important limitations stem from the limited experience of most pathologists in the cytopathological diagnosis of soft tissue tumors. Soft tissue tumors are rare. Sarcomas account for 1% of all malignancies, and uh, there are many histological type and subtype of benign soft tissue tumors and sarcomas. I think that the lack of standardized system for reporting soft tissue FNA, similar to that of uh, thyroid, salivary glands, breast, and uh, many other organs is another important limitation of soft tissue cytopathology. Other factors uh, may affect and limit results of FNA examination of soft tissue lesions. Loss of architectural and vascular pattern, difficulty to accurate grade soft tissue sarcoma on FNA, the size and consistency of the soft tissue mass, its location and proximity to vital structures, all this can impact on the quality of the FNA diagnostic yield. Cell blocks can restore some of architectural pattern. And as I mentioned earlier, we can improve correct grading when segregating smears of sarcomas into high or low grade. And the goal of soft tissue FNA is to help clinicians to decide, to decide what to do next. The crucial information is whether the soft tissue mass is malign, malignant or not. When the mass is malignant, neoplasm, and is a metastatic carcinoma, melanoma, or lymphoma. Then the patients go on to oncologist and they chose an adequate treatment. In the case of primary soft tissue sarcoma, the question is if it is a small round cell tumor, and if so, what histological type? In majority of other soft tissue sarcomas, the question is if low, or high grade and histologic diagnosis if possible. When the soft tissue lesions are benign, is it inflammatory reactive condition or primary soft tissue neoplasm? And if yes, histologic diagnosis if possible. All those questions depends on different treatment options for different soft tissue tumors. Most common therapy for localized primary soft tissue sarcoma 
is slim sparring white surgical resection and adjuvant radiotherapy or hemotherapy if required. The type of surgery depends on the size, the anatomical relation to vital structures, as well as on diagnosis and grade. Treatment of most small round cell sarcomas includes new adjuvant chemotherapy with specific treatment protocols and requires exact histologic diagnosis. Treatment options for some benign soft tissue lesions, such as uh, nodular and proliferative fasciitis and myositis, ischemic fasciitis and myositis ossificans, include conservative treatment, watch and wait and watch option, or rarely excision. As majority of palpable soft tissue mass are benign, benign tumors are estimated to be approximately 100 times more frequent than sarcomas. FNA of benign soft tissue tumors has been shown to be a rapid, simple, and safe diagnostic procedure, leading to optimal treatment of either local excision or simply watchful waiting. We cannot uh, forget the role of clinical information and radiology in diagnosis of soft tissue tumors. Most malignant soft tissue tumors are larger than five centimeter and deep, while only 5% of soft tissue tumors larger than five centimeter and uh, about 1% of deep seated, seated soft tissue tumors are benign. Radiological features play important role in the diagnosis as well. In MR, in MR, most of sarcomas have a high T2 signal density and are usually heterogeneous on the T1 weight images. Coming to the FNA workup of soft tissue tumors in our institution in Lund, Sweden has 10 million inhibitors and sarcoma incidence is approximately 370 new cases of sarcoma per year. Evaluation and treatment of musculoskeletal tumors is centralized, and currently there are three sarcoma centers in Sweden, Lund, Gothenburg, and Stockholm. Sarcoma centers in Sweden are members of the Scandinavian Sarcoma Group, a multi-center organization working in Scandinavian countries since uh, 1979. Within this organization, pathologists participate together with radiologists, surgeons, oncologists, and genetics in joint project. And a group of pathologists meet once or twice a year and jointly evaluate different types of soft tissue tumors and discuss difficult cases. SSG has a common database of thousands of soft tissue tumors. Regarding management of soft tissue tumors in Sweden, specific referral guidelines exist. All patients with soft tissue swellings larger than five centimeters, swellings under muscle fascia, regardless of size, and all children with soft tissue tumors in the extremities and trunk, regardless of size, should be referred to the sarcoma center. MR is recommended as the first choice in the evaluation of soft tissue tumors and biopsy should be carried out and diagnosed at sarcoma center. As you can see, both FNA and core needle biopsy are primarily recommended in the examination of soft tissue neoplasm. In Lund, in my clinic, soft tissue FNA has been routinely used since 1972. Majority of patients with suspicious of soft tissue mass referred to sarcoma center in Lund are examined in the FNA clinic by cytopathologists. Currently more than 500 patients with soft tissue mass barrier undergo FNA or FNA 
and core needle biopsy in the FNA clinic. Since 2001, cytopathologists perform core needle biopsy in conjunction with FNA in uh, many or in majority of soft tissue cases. Since uh, 2001, our service expanded and currently more than 60 patients undergo ultrasound or CT guided FNA and core needle biopsy in the department of radiology. The pathologist actively participates in these procedures with on-site evaluation. The red the arrows indicate the device for rows, rapid on-site evaluation, a portable microscope and arrangement for rapid deep quick stain. Regarding technical issues, we usually perform two to four passes of FNA. Smears are air dried or alcohol fixed to stain with MGG and hematoxylin eosin stainings. In majority of cases, smears from the first pass are deep weak stain for on-site evaluation rows to decide if additional passes to obtain more material for ancillary tests or core needle biopsy would be necessary. Part of smears are often present processed for cell blocks, for tumor tissue architecture and immor stainings. Regarding molecular tests, cytologic material is most often used for fish. Coming back to soft tissue FNA, in our approach to diagnosis of soft tissue lesions, we use triple diagnostic principles. The diagnosis is a synthesis of clinical and radiological data and biopsy, which uh, in our clinic most often FNA and core needle biopsy. Regardless of diagnostic modality, patients presenting with a soft tissue mass and suspicion of sarcoma should be preferably referred to specialized, special, specialized sarcoma centers with the access to multidisciplinary expertise. In our center workup of, soft, workup of soft tissue tumors is a jointly work of all members of our multidisciplinary sarcoma team. Once a week, members of the multidisciplinary team discuss results of evaluation of sarcoma patients, plan treatment of new patients, and discuss the result of treatment and follow-up for already treated patients. Members of the team has access to clinical data, images, and the biopsy results. Indications to FNA of soft tissue in Lund include evaluation of new primary soft tissue mass, both non-neoplastic and banging neoplasm and sarcoma. Other indications are diagnosis of locally recurrent and metastatic malignancies presented as a soft tissue mass. Many benign cell sarcomatous lesion are suspicious for malignant soft tissue tumors because of their clinical presentation, presentation. And FNA can be simple and rapid method to exclude malignancy and suggest correct diagnosis. It is very important to be familiar with cytological features and correct recognize benign reactive soft tissue lesions and to distinguish them from true neoplasm because different treatment options. I would like to show you some example of inflammatory reactive soft tissue cases, relatively easily diagnosed by FNA as benign lesion, but where exact histologic diagnosis can be difficult to render from cytological smears alone. FNA smears of the six centimeter large subcutaneous mass show 
scanty material with the uh, of uh, small loss uh, sheets and single myofibroblasts like cells and fibrin. FNA was signed out as benign reactive condition, likely ischemic fasciitis. And the diagnosis of ischemic fasciitis was confirmed by simultaneously taken corneal biopsy, showing this characteristic uh, zonal architecture of fibrinoid necrosis and hypocellular fibrosis. This 65 year old woman presented with a deep heart and tender mass in the right upper arm of uh, one month duration. FNA smear show proliferating fibroblasts and myofibroblasts with a mixture of osteoclasts, oste osteoclasts, osteoblasts, and uh, regenerating muscle fibers. On this slide, you can see spindle cells embedded in a pinkish violet matrix, likely osteoid. And on the next slide, regenerating muscle fibers presenting as a muscle giant cells. FNA was signed out as benign, consistent with myositis ossificans. This diagnosis was confirmed by simultaneously taken corneal biopsy. On histological section of corneal biopsy, you can see fibrotic tissue with the proliferating fibroblasts and myofibroblasts and the bone formation in the margin of the biopsy. When we discuss FNA of reactive cell sarcomatous conditions of soft tissue, I would like to stay for a while and show some smears of nodular fasciitis, one entity which can be difficult to diagnose correctly on FNA smears, as it shares some microscopic features with many other entities. Nodular fasciitis is most often rapidly growing subcutaneous mass in young adults, which can be painful or tender and most common location are upper extremity trunk and head and neck. Most of the nodular fasciitis are rapidly growing and self-limited masses. Because nodular fasciitis may mimic clinically and radiologically benign and malignant neoplasms, problem in FNA diagnosis occur when we deal with cases of uncommon clinical presentation and cellular smears resembling that of a spindle cell or pleomorphic sarcomas with a myxoid matrix or other myxoid neoplasm. Unfortunately, many of those cases are treated with unnecessary surgery. Here, we can see some smears of nodular fasciitis where we can uh, see clusters and disperse and uh, disperse uh, pleomorphic myofibroblastic cells with admixture of osteoclast-like cells, ganglion cells, binucleated ganglion cells, and uh, these cells are often in the myxoid background and finally very easily found mitosis. Our approach in Lund to nodular fasciitis diagnosed on FNA smears is watchful waiting for six weeks to some months. And when the lesion does not get smaller or disappear, it should be removed for histopathological examination. This young woman presented with a five centimeter deep mass in the shoulder. FNA smears are hypocellular showing large clusters of spindle cells and dispersed pleomorphic myofibroblasts in the myxoid background. Cell block sections show positive staining for smas masolactin and negative for dismin. This case was correctly diagnosed on FNA smears and cell block sections 
as nodular fasciitis. And now I would like to discuss practical approach to diagnose FNA smears from uh, new primary soft tissue tumors. There are more than 100 uh, subtype of soft tissue neoplasm, and I don't think that it is possible for us on FNA to subtype everyone perfectly. Practical way to interpret and diagnose FNA smears from primary soft tissue neoplasm is to divide them into specific morphological categories based on their microscopic pattern, such as uh, the background of the smears and the dominant type of tumor cells. These categories, including smears with mixoid background or smears of predominantly small round, ovoid, spindlet, epitheloid, polygonal, and pleomorphic cells, which can be a precise matching the surgical pathology diagnosis, or may raise a limited number of differential diagnoses. Many cytopathologists use additional category of smears showing adipocytic pattern. Regarding this category, lipoma is the most common soft tissue neoplasm and liposarcoma, most common adult soft tissue sarcoma. However, there are variety of benign and malignant lipomatous tumors that present mixoid background and predominantly spindle cells or pleomorphic patterns and do not match a depositic pattern only. This patient has subcutaneous mass in the neck, clinically a lipoma. FNA displays fragments of mature fat tissue, which fits very well with this diagnosis. And uh, the images below show MR, MR and FNA smears of hibernoma. And again, we can see sheets of round to oval cells of variable size with vacuolated or granulated cytoplasm and centrally placed small uniform nucleoli. Together with radiography, and clinical presentation, the diagnosis of hibernoma is easy to render from uh, FNA smears. In uh, opposite or different situation, when uh, we look at uh, these smears of spindle cell lipomas, we can see clusters or dispersed uniform spindle cells and a mixoid background matrix with some uh, mast cells. And uh, we can hardly see any fat cells. So these smears of spindle cell lipoma represent a marriage of spindle cell and mixoid category and without access to clinical information, radiology and ancillary tests, it will be hard to correct diagnose this lesion. To continue my talk, I would like to focus mainly on mixoid round cells and spindle cells categories and present some interesting cases of our everyday practice to you. Mixoid soft tissue lesions share one distinct morphologic feature, abundant mixoid matrix. Mixoid lesions, particularly low grade can be diagnosed based on cytomorphology alone. Morphologically, benign mixoid lesions generally have lower cellularity and less atypia than malignant ones. In uh, the examination of some mixoid lesions, the combination of clinical information and morphological features give us diagnosis and for other ancillary studies consider necessary to obtain histologic diagnosis. I would like to show you a couple of cases showing mixoid patterns in FNA smears. This 46 year old woman presented with a slowly growing mass in the right tight. FNA smears show an abundant mixoid background and close clusters of or scattered single cells with 
small round nuclei and often with uh, very long cytoplasmic projections. And in the high magnifications, these long cytoplasmic projections are very distinct. Cell block section shows basically similar pictures and whole tumor section of excised myxoma where we can appreciate this very hypocellular myxoid lesion. In summary, along with uh, the cytologic diagnostic criteria, smears of intramuscular myxoma show frequently distinct microscopic features and it is an example of benign myxoid soft tissue tumor which can be confidently diagnosed on FNA smears alone when we put together clinical presentation, radiology, and cytopathology. The most important differential of myxoma is low-grade myxofibrosarcoma, the presence of moderate nuclear pleomorphism, fragments of capillaries and in the myxoid matrix are the most important clues to the diagnosis of myxofibrosarcoma. Smears from myxomas are hypocellular and the, the nuclear pleomorphism seen in uh, myxofibrosarcoma is absent. Regarding myxoid sarcomas, many of them can be diagnosed confidently using FNA in conjunction with ancillary diagnostic tests. A good example is myxoid liposarcoma. This 34-year-old man presented with a huge deep mass in the left tide. FNA smears show tissue fragments with a run to avoid primitive mesenchymal cells, abundant myxoid matrix, and branchy capillary network. And here we can see diagnostic features of myxoid liposarcoma, characteristic myxoid matrix, capillary network, and uni or multivaculated lipoblasts, some with signet ring features. Here you can see a lot, plenty of lip, signet ring like lipoblasts in the cell block of myxoid liposarcoma. Most myxoid liposarcoma is characterized by the recurrent translocation T2016 with gene fusion that is specific for this neoplasm. Fish examination is then very helpful to make correct diagnosis. And again, I would like to show you how repetitive this picture is. Some smears from different cases of myxoid liposarcoma abundant myxoid matrix, capillary network, and univaculi lipoblasts. Differential diagnosis includes spindle cell lipoma, intramuscular myxoma, and low-grade myxofibrosarcoma. And on this slide, you can see smears of spindle cell lipoma resembling that of myxoid liposarcoma. This case was misdiagnosed as myxoid liposarcoma of an, on FNA. Small round cell sarcomas are a group of clinically heterogeneous tumors accounts for a majority of solid malignancies in the pediatric age group. FNA examination for diagnosis of small round cell tumors can be recommended as the cytologic diagnosis of these tumors gives excellent results. When FNA is combined with ancillary tests and with an adequate specimen, a specific histologic diagnosis is rendered in more than 93% of cases. This 30 year old man presented with a huge intraabdominal mass and liver metastasis. FNA smear stain with deep quick shows microscopical features of small round cell tumor, small rounded and dark tumor cells with poorly preserved cytoplasm. In cases like that, 
ancillary diagnostic tests are necessary to make histological diagnosis. This tumor exhibits polyphenotypic differentiation with immunoreactivity for keratins, dismin, and neuroendocrine markers. In addition, desmoplastic small round cell tumor is characterized by a unique translocation T1122 with gene fusion that can be detected by FISH tests. FISH examination has been done in this case to render the final diagnosis. Now let's talk about spindle cells. Spindle cell soft tissue tumors constitute a broad category of benign, intermediate, and malignant tumors. Many of them are common targets for FNA and cytologic examination. An interpretation of FNA smears of spindle cell tumors can be difficult as many of these tumors share some morphologic features and clinical presentation. Without ancillary diagnostic tests, specific histological diagnosis is hard to render from aspiration smears alone. FNA diagnosis of some benign spindle cell lesions, however, can be confidentially diagnosed with an adequate specimen. An example of such lesion can be elastofibroma dorsi, soft tissue mass, likely of reactive nature. This lesion is typically slowly growing mass located near the inferior margin of the scapula. This typical location together with uh, imaging findings is suggestive of the diagnosis. Smears show a mixture of hypocellular collagenous stroma, fat, and spindle cells. The main diagnostic clue of elastofibroma is the presence of elastic fibers with serrated borders corresponding to faulty elastin fibrillogenesis. These fibers can be clearly visible in high power magnification. Below, we can see them in elastin stain core needle biopsy section. Diagnostic difficulties arise when the material is poor, fat cells are dominant, and the typical serrated elastic fibers are missing. And uh, an important notice, the degenerated elastic fibers presented as linear, globular, and stellate structures with serrated edges are usually easy to find on wet fixed smears. These fibers are very subtle in air-dried smears. The next spindle cell lesion commonly examined by FNA is Schwannoma. Schwannoma is a benign spindle cell tumor of nerve sheath origin. Majority smears of Schwannoma display distinct morphology. And this diagnosis is relatively easy to render from routinely stained smears. In smears of Schwannoma, we can appreciate cohesive tissue clusters and uh, fragments of different size with irregular borders, spindle cells with long and slender, sometimes coma and boomerang shaped nuclei with pointed ends and occasionally nuclear palisading created uh, verrocai bodies. Rounded nuclei is often part of the cell population. There are, however, a subset of schwannomas that show atypical features and cause diagnostic difficulties. Cellular smears and smears from Asian schwannomas containing large bizarre nuclei often raise the possibility of a malignant tumor. In our study of 160 schwannomas with histologic confirmation, 
six cases were misdiagnosed as malignant by, by FNA, five of those as sarcoma. Similar problem were reported in many publications of cytopathology of schwannoma. On these slides, smears of schwannoma show a worrisome picture. Smears uh, of Asian schwannoma exhibit nuclear chromorphism with occasional marked anisocariosis and hyperchromasia. Our approach to FNA diagnosis of schwannoma includes preparation of cell blocks and immunocytochemical tests if satisfactory specimen is obtained. This patient presented with a subcutaneous mass in the forehead. FNA smears show cellular clusters of spindle cells on hematoxylin osine stainings. We can see nuclear palisading creating barocai bodies. And S100 positivity confirms the diagnosis of schwannoma. As I mentioned earlier, loss of architectural pattern and vasculature in FNA smears is one of important disadvantages of FNA of soft tissue tumors. It is obvious in this case of solitary fibrous tumor. We cannot appreciate typical prominent stuck horn vascular, vascular pattern in smears of solitary fibrous tumor. However, growing access to new ancillary diag diagnostic tests has greatly facilitated the FNA diagnosis and in many cases of spindle cell tumors, histologic diagnosis can be rendered from smears in conjunction with ancillary tests, despite lack of typical architectural patterns. This 84 year old man presented with a 10 centimeter deep mass in the neck. FNA smears show tight clusters, fibroblast like tumor cells with spindle or ovoid nuclei and scan to cytoplasm. Immunocytochemistry is diagnostically helpful in this case, as the tumor cells display non-characteristic spindle cell morphology, but display characteristic reactivities for CD34 and STAT6 on cell block sections. Regarding malignant spindle cell neoplasts, most of them cannot be diagnosed by FNA alone. When we use FNA in conjunction with diagnostic ancillary tests, we can solve many cases of spindle cell sarcoma and establish precise histopathology diagnosis by FNA. I would like to show you some example of spindle cell sarcomas that can be diagnosed confidently by FNA. All these cases of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance presented as an exophytic mass and in one patient as a small induration in the skin of the infraclavicular area. These cases were correctly diagnosed using FNA complemented by cell blocks and immunocytochemistry. Again, FNA smears show spindle cell proliferation consistent with spindle cell neoplasm. On cell block section, we can appreciate a story form pattern of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance and uh, a positive result for CD34 staining, which confirms the diagnosis. Additional example of spindle cell sarcoma that can be confidentially diagnosed on FNA smears, complemented by ancillary tests are leiomyosarcoma. Leiomyosarcoma accounts for more than 10% of all primary soft tissue sarcomas. Soft tissue leiomyosarcoma occurs most often in the retroperitoneum and limbs, but also in other locations such as visceral organs and bones. In most smears of leiomyosarcoma, a characteristic fascicular pleomorphic pattern is obvious and low power in at low power examination. A pure spindle cell or epithelioid pattern is less common. 
in high grade leiomyosarcoma, we can see prominent solar atypia, pleomorphism, necrosis, and multinucleate giant cells. These are common findings. findings. This 70 year, 79 year old woman presented with a seven centimeter intraabdominal mass. FNA disclosed cohesive clusters of spindle cells with elongated cigar shaped nuclei. Spindle cells are embedded in blue or magenta colored matrix. In primary pathology report, a possibility of cellular schwannoma or leiomyosarcoma was raised. raised. At the next, you can see cell block section with fascicular pattern of the tumor tissue and immunoreactivity for smas muscle lactin and the SMIN that fits very well with leiomyosarcoma diagnosis. And the next is a case of synovial sarcoma and the history of a small lesion correctly diagnosed by the marriage of FNA and ancillary tests. Synovial sarcoma accounts for five to 10% of soft tissue sarcomas. It may occur, occur at any age, but uh, more than half of the patients are children and young adults. Most synovial sarcomas are deep seated and arise in the extremity trunk and head and neck region. A translocation TX18 is present in most synovial sarcomas, resulting in general fusion, which can be detected by fish. This uh, 52 year old man had a two year history of a painful mass in the left foot. FNA of the mass shows hypercellular smears of sheets of blunt looking spindle cells mixed with dispersed spindle cells. A suspicion of synovial sarcoma was raised and the diagnosis was confirmed by the fish examination. You can see operative specimen which shows removed tumor surrounded by muscle fascia. So this white margin and the histologic section of uh, this tumor showing typical features, fascicular pattern of uh, synovial sarcoma. As, uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier, smears of synovial sarcoma are hypercellular and display most often blunt looking and uniform spindle cells. Poorly differentiated subtypes shows predominantly round cells morphology resembling uh, that of smears of uh, Ewing sarcoma. And finally, two last categories that uh, display specific diagnostic pattern in low magnification. Epithelioid, polygonal, and pleomorphic cell patterns. The first one includes smears of soft tissue neoplasts with predominantly epithelioid morphology. And the second one, different type of pleomorphic sarcomas, but uh, some benign soft tissue lesions such as nodular fasciitis and uh, pleomorphic lipoma can be also placed in this category. To finish my talk, just some words about the possible complications of soft tissue FNA. Minor bleeding can occasionally occur, but uh, I've never seen an infection, pneumothorax, or tumor cells sitting along the needle tract in our patients. The last complication is extremely rare and can be related to the size of the needles. I mean more risky with core needle biopsy than with FNA. And the final message is we can do it. FNA is an excellent diagnostic tool, but we need to be aware of the limitations 
of this diagnostic procedure. And we need to be familiar with histopathology and cytopathology of soft tissue lesions. And a take home message. These are important points in the cytologic evaluation of soft tissue tumors. Experience in histopathological and FNA diagnosis of soft tissue lesions. Adequate sampling. Use rapid on-site evaluation. Adequate sample preparation and triage. Use both air-dried and alcohol-fixed smear cell blocks and the best to have access to standardized ancillary techniques. And finally, multidisciplinary approach, triple diagnostics, and a systemic approach focusing on pattern of recognition. These persons are members of our sarcoma team in Lund. And uh, I say thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Demansky, for this uh, excellent, so well illustrated talk. I think it was a treat for all of us to, uh, to witness this presentation on such an auspicious day. We've had all our Devon seniors today. I welcome everybody. Uh, there are a lot of interesting questions uh, for you, uh, although your slides are very nicely you know, uh, shown us that cytopathology is at its tipping point. And in fact, there are so many possibilities. And it's so relevant in this part of the world because we see uh, these lumps and bumps come in larger sizes. So cytology becomes very pertinent uh, to this part of the country. So I'll just start my questions for you from Dr. Radhika starting. So she initially asked, how many passes uh, do you recommend for a fine needle aspiration of a soft tissue mass? Although I think you mentioned two to four passes. So how many passes do you feel? We usually use uh, at least two passes, but when we deal with uh, soft tissue sarcoma, so you know, difficult cases. We, we go up to five, six passes and uh, we usually perform additional pass just for ancillary techniques. So we, I don't think it's enough just to pick up material from needle after, after smears, but uh, we put needle in the patient again to, to receive enough material for ancillary techniques, which is very, very important. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, uh... You know, at the same time, one can collect additional material, especially if you are anticipating a round cell tumor where you definitely need uh, ancillary techniques. So Dr. Mathur asks, uh, image guided FNAC, which cases do you select? How do you select cases for image guided FNAC? You know, basically all patients with palpable mass is coming to our FNA clinic but many patients with huge masses, with necrotic masses or not deep masses, we, we do it together with radiologists at the Department of Radiology with guiding of CT guiding or ultrasound guiding. Yeah, that's pretty much what we have for the deep seated masses or, you know, which are difficult. So the intervention radiologist comes into play and we do some rows also for those cases. Uh, Dr. Pinakin asks, uh, can fish be performed on aspirates? I think that's a very wonderful question. Can we do fish on aspirates? Yeah, it's a good question anyway, but you know, we, we use molecular genetics on FNA. Uh, we do a lot of lung aspiration, EBAS and so on with molecular genetics, also, also the new generation sequencing, but, but on regarding soft tissue masses, we basically use fish, still use fish, which is a very, very quick and simple technique actually, giving us excellent information. Yeah, so in terms of the sample, actually I think fish is a great, uh, you know, uh, the, the aspirates are great material. For us, we are at a referral center, so we get more cases referred as blocks. So we have to report, although in our QCs, we've had cell pellets on which we perform fish and it gives excellent results because you don't have the difficulty of paraffin. So uh, I think that's a very timely question. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's another question about fish or the, the, for fish, do you prefer cell block or smears? And if smears, air tried or fixed? For, for fish, we prefer smears. 
and uh, we use both end, but we use sometimes uh, cells pre in cell preserve because we use this uh, hologic technique to pre prepare cell block. And we use the same specimen theme prep for fish and it works quite good. Okay, thank you. Uh, then there's an interesting question by Dr. Ashita Mondal. Uh, he's had a lot of interest in imaging related to diagnosis of soft tissue tumor. So he mentions and asks a question, uh, how do you find use utility of MRI when making a diagnosis of solitary fibrous tumor? And uh, adding to that, he posts another question that, uh, can you make this diagnosis without IHCs? What is your uh, take on that? You mean solitary fibrous tumor? Yes, the role of yeah. imaging and IHCs. You know, imaging is okay and uh, it gives us a lot of information, but still, case like solitary fibrous tumor, we, we do diagnose always because, because it's so important. And, you know, because this intermediate type of soft tissue mass, you, you never can predict behavior and what happens with patients. So I think the very important to, to have exact histological diagnosis from early beginning. And we do it with immunocytochemistry on our FNA. So this is not enough, in my opinion, it's not enough with images. Yeah, I agree completely. And it's the ubiquitous tumor, you know, it's now it's being found out at different places, which actually were labeled as spindle cell tumor. And I, I, I feel STAT6 is an excellent marker to substantiate a diagnosis. When we used to use several other markers like PCL2, MIC2, and CD34 comes even in DFSP. So I feel, I think one STAT6, and I say that's it. So what do you feel about STAT6 in solitary fibrous tumor? It's very good marker. We use it frequently. And it works very good on yeah. cytology, on cell blocks, everywhere. Thank you so much. Uh, then there's another interesting question. Uh, uh, there's an algorithmic approach for malignant round cell tumor in the upcoming guidelines. Uh, are there some uh, algorithmic approaches which are coming up for the round cell tumors, which I think also is a very pertinent question, considering there are tailored chemotherapies for different tumors. So is there an algorithm which you would suggest or are they coming up? You know, basically, Majority patients uh, with Ransel tumors are coming to us through through pediatricians and oncologists, and they a long time ago they they didn't believe FNA, but today they do. So we we start almost always with FNA, and then complete with core needle biopsy. But basically, in many cases, is enough with FNA because you don't need so as much material to perform this molecular tests. And our, our oncologists request always molecular tests. So without, without positive molecular tests, it's very difficult to start treatment. At so, least at my place. Right, so I agree completely. I mean, uh, on that, I would just add a question from my side in terms of the, uh, you know, the high throughput techniques that are coming up as uh, NGS for round cell tumors. And now we know the undifferentiated sarcomas are subtype as U-wings or the non-ETS, b corn chick duck spore. So how do you find the utility of cytology for NGS, particularly in the round cell tumor spectrum? You know, we, we, don't, we don't use it yet. So as I told you, we, we practice NGS, the panel of NGS, uh, and uh, on lung tumors, especially lung people do a lot of uh, cytology and, and NGS on cytology. But uh, we basically use, still use fish in this part with soft tissue. But I think it's coming more and more and do, the new classification of small ancel tumor is very, very special and interesting. So yeah. in, in some months or some years, it will be very widely used, I think so. Yeah, because I think Memorial is using, as we, we do uh, actually fish in RDPCR, but I think Memorial is using the reflex uh, panel of the NGS for round cell tumors, and it's kind of throughput, high throughput. And especially when the chemotherapies are also different, including for RMS and the other ones. So I think maybe that's the way forward, but this got a cost attached to it towards this part of the country, of the world that we are into. So that's, uh, quite expensive at the moment, but I think, yeah, so we yeah. also triage cases. And do you do uh, fish for all cases of urine sarcoma in the round cell tumors at your center, or do you select cases of urine sarcomas where you would subject to fish? 
you know, we we do a lot of fish at my place, but uh, we are married with uh, Clinic of Genetics. So we send also a lot of material to Clinic of Genetics and uh, they do a lot really. So they help us in many cases. Okay. Okay, so there was one question by Dr. Radhika. She was interested in your case of DSR city and she said, uh, on which preparation was fish performed? Did you use a smear or was it a cell block preparation on which you did fish for DSR? We use, yes. we use direct smears or, or liquid based preparation. Okay, so on the, on the LBCs. Okay, I think that's a great, uh, great uh, sample again. And uh, another comprehensive question, a very interesting question again, you know, I, from, my, from my side also. Uh, do you use terms like low grade spindle cell tumor? Because we get these, this is one of the referral, you know, uh, diagnosis for certain entities. So do you use it? And what is your experience with the low grade spindle cell tumor? My doctor, I this question. You know, this is a very good question. And this difficult era, because I, I show you a couple of cases when you can make final diagnosis, but I, I, I believe it's much better if you if you can't be honest and tell to clinicians that this one is spindle cell lesion. I don't know if it is benign or low grade. So we have to go forward with core needle biopsy or something else. I think the, this is the best solution. Instead to try to you know find diagnosis and then it will be wrong. Right. So I, I personally uh, do not prefer to use the term grade when I say, uh, when I'm, you know, unclear about a sarcoma because I restrict preferably more towards a sarcoma. So I say probably a spindle cell tumor of uncertain, uh, you know, the, the one of the categories uh, of the uncertain malignant potential that is coming up as part of your excellent mm -hmm. paper in the six categories that have come up inside of pathology. Journal. So I think that's one term. And we do see nodular fasciitis, you know, as referred as spindle cell low grade tumor and actually on biopsies of it, you know, and it just shows up as nodular fasciitis. So that's one entity I think when people sort of, you know, uh, think about a low grade tumor or suspect sarcoma. So overall, do you feel in this present time, Dr. Mondal asks that uh, in soft tissue tumor cytology, can we do without ancillary techniques like IHCs, how important it is to integrate? I think the way you said marriage of the clinical and the immunos. So what do you feel overall in terms of present times? You know, of course, it depends of your resources. In Sweden, we, we are on the way to use more and more ancillary techniques and more sophisticated diagnosis. But I think the power of FNA is also, it's very simple and easy and quick method. And sometimes it's enough to say, this one is not malignant. It, you are very happy with this kind of diagnosis, yes? But, but I think in the end, if you want to work with soft tissue and, uh, and uh, sarcomas, you, you need ancillary techniques. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, that's that's true that we have to integrate. And the way you very rightly said, you know, to integrate uh, cytology with ancillary techniques, uh, uh, with the clinical findings and imaging, and the way you showed your cases was uh, so uh, delightful and reassuring to us. So I think, uh, yeah, and there's one more final question, if you don't mind answering. Uh, Somebody wanted to ask uh, why a simultaneous FNAC and biopsy was performed in the case of uh, ischemic fasciitis. Uh, so you had a case in which there was a simultaneous and that, that does happen. So just somebody is curious to know why the uh, FNA and biopsy was simultaneously done in the case of ischemic fasciitis. You, you know, we, we as because corneal biopsies actually quite simple procedure as well, with exception for a local anesthesia. And when we, when we meet patients and uh, when, when something is not completely clear, we take usually sample both for ancillary techniques and perform core needle biopsies. And sometimes core needle biopsy is better than cytology. And sometimes cytology is better. So these two techniques complement to each other. So this is the reason we use quite frequently nowadays, both 
FNA and corneal needle biopsy by cytopathologists. I completely agree that they, they, they are very complementary. Sometimes, you know, for the large mass lesions, when you can have multiple passes within FNAC, and uh, when you compare it to a biopsy, which will give you a limited number, of course. So I think it's a good, sometimes cytology tells us, you know, uh, features which can uh, sort of uh, let, compel us to go back to the biopsy and the diagnosis can be a, a great integration of the two. So I completely agree with your these very valuable thoughts. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Dubai. Dr. Bharat, Dr. Bharat, there is another question by Deepa Singh. There's okay. a question by, yeah. Uh, can I read it out if you don't yes, mind? Yes, sure, 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 Dr. Sure. Uh, Deepa Singh asked, it is seen in our experience that FNA smears of benign fibrous histiocytoma do not reveal Teuton type giant cells. On histology, they are clearly visible. Any particular reason for this? Oh, I have to, I have to say that I haven't seen as many cases on FNA of uh, benign fibrous histiocytoma. I think in, in my clinic, we, we may be seeing three or four cases. And in one case, I could find these giant cells. So speaking of giant cells, there's, you know, I, I came across a case which actually was labeled as Rhabdomyosarcoma, which turned out to be an LCH, the uh, histocytosis, not actually Langerhans cells. Uh, and it did have uh, uh, Teuton like giants, several binucleate forms, uh, which were very worrisome. So, speaking of that, uh, would you like to highlight what are the false positives that you've come? I've come across uh, uh, fibromidosis is one of the false positives. And you mentioned about ancient urilemoma or schwannoma. Any other false positives that you do come across? Uh, which we should be alert, which we should be careful about. We, we make aspiration of, of uh, desmoid fibromatosis as well. And uh, it's very, it's very tricky diagnosis because, because, you know, on cytology is very difficult with, with uh, immunostainings and it doesn't help as much. So I think this is the combination of images and FNA and uh, anyway, we, quite often take corneal biopsy as well. And, uh, and regarding schwannomas, you know, I, I believed before that it was very simple diagnosis, but uh, many years ago, we, we did this study with 160 patients and I was completely surprised that, I, as I remember, it was about 20% no satisfactory specimens and five malignant cases, you know, pulse, six malignant cases, which was finally schwannoma. So it was the reason I wanted to tell you about schwannomas because the diagnosis of schwannoma is not as easy as, as many cytopathologists believe. I agree, yeah, especially when there can be a paradoxical high cellularity and uh, so one can get very tempted to call it a sarcoma. So I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a very, very uh, right pitfall that one needs to be aware of not to fall into. And thank you for guiding us on that. Uh, Dr. Adhika, are there any other questions? Yeah, because Yeah, yes. there is another question by uh, uh, Dr. Vijay Gupta, who again, I think it's partly covered, but uh, anyway, I'll read out this question. Are there any soft pointers to distinguish recurrent benign soft tissue lesions with good cellularity versus lesions of intermediate malignant potential like DFSP? You know, this, this is a good question, but, but I don't think you can, you can distinguish them without ancillary techniques. Because this is, this, this is the common problem with spindle cell lesion, especially low grade recurrences and benign spindle cell lesions. So, my point is uh, you have to use ancillary techniques to make this distinguishing. Yeah, thank you so much. I think Bharat, uh, I don't see any more questions you can. Yeah, I could see another. Uh, Dr. Mondela has asked, do you perform cell block? I think you've answered that you do uh, believe in cell blocks and smears for ancillary testing, right? Uh, as uh, was asked. So I think with this, uh, we're very grateful to you for sharing your valuable time, 
guiding us through your journey. Uh, I just had one quick question because I'm so enamored by your paper, the recent six categories that you mentioned. Uh, what do you feel about the uh, risk of malignancy, which is showing up in the inadequates about, I think, 40%. I mean, I think that's the third most common, uh, highest risk of malignancy. So what is your uh, comment on that? How do we uh, circumvent that, uh, you know, the inadequates, which are associated with high risk of malignancy? after suspicious and malignant categories, if I remember your paper. You know, adequacy is a major problem because sometimes I, I, I've seen once dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. I showed the picture of this young lady with, with patchy thing in the skin. I did aspiration myself and, uh, and I obtained only 20 or 25 spindle cells. And uh, we performed cell block and cell block was very cellular of some reason. I don't understand when, why. And the immunostainings we see there 34 was excellent. So we could make diagnosis despite the fact the, the size of the lesion. And once the, it was the same problem, I, I did aspiration of, of uh, synovial sarcoma in the, in the young lady. And it was very unusual location in the foot, in the skin, basically. And I obtained some cells, spindle cells. And uh, this is the problem because some spindle cells sometimes tell you a lot, tell you stories. So we, we decided to tell to our clinicians that we don't like the spindle cells within location. And we recommended to remove the lesion and they removed the lesion. It was synovial sarcoma, the, the very small synovial sarcoma, less than one centimeter. I, I've never seen a case like that. So I think adequacy is very, very difficult question. I, I don't know how, how you can describe it or, or make uh, you know, criteria for adequacy. Yeah, but sorry, I think- I <laughs> I, Sorry that I, I can't answer you properly. <laughs> No, I could, I could uh, completely understand. I think everybody could. So that's one issue. But I think that becomes better if it is, you know, as we say, it is operator dependent. If the pathologist is performing with the under the intervention radiologist in deep seated doing the rows, so these probably can help us to improve our adequacy, uh, you know, uh, uh, adequacy rates, and we can reduce probably that number a percentage of the uh, inadequates and be able to ut utilize this technique further, which I think, again, uh, another final question I had, because uh, although it looks very tempting to, you know, do FNAC, we see a lot of uh, cases coming referred and they are fraught with errors also. So your final word, it, I mean, point about uh, uh, the way it should be integrated in a multidisciplinary team, would you like to suggest that? Although you mentioned it clearly. So, you know, just your final point on that coming from your, uh, your side. You know, we really work together with our colleagues, not only radiologists, orthopedic surgeons also. And occasionally I, I told you about radiology, but sometimes we go to operating theater and uh, I do myself biopsy together with orthopedic surgeons and the patient in general anesthesia. So we work close together and we use roles in many, many situations, which helps a lot, really. Yeah. So I think that's very inspirational to all of us, uh, how we have to work together towards a better effective patient care. And uh, thank you so much, uh, very, uh, Dr. Domanski, and I'm very thankful to the Academy, our president, Dr. Nijav and Dr. Radhika, secretary, for this wonderful opportunity. And from all of us, uh, to you for sparing your precious time and educating us on this very auspicious day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was, it was really very nice to be here and to see you all. Thank you. We well, hope to see you in real sometime in, in, in India. We hope to see you in real, yes. I hope I see you in person as well. Sure. Have a great weekend thank and so thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are very grateful. Thank you. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>